Um, my name is Kevin Harold. I'm a professor of immunobiology and internal medicine at Yale University. So the uh, work that we recently published and that I presented this morning had to do with a prevention trial to determine whether or not we could prevent or delay the onset of type 1 diabetes in uh, relatives of people uh, where the uh, family member has type 1 diabetes, but these individuals themselves don't have diabetes. We know from the serologic studies that were done and their glucose tolerance tests that while they don't have overt diabetes, they're at risk for developing it. And in fact, the predictions before we started the study were that about 75% would develop diabetes over five years. So we performed a randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial that was done in the United States, Canada, Europe, and in Australia in which we recruited these high-risk individuals um, and randomized them to treatment with a drug called tepluzumab, which is a anti-CD3 antibody that does not bind the FC receptor, and that's important in determining the, the drug's mechanism of action and its safety. So the participants, uh, the total was 76, were randomized to treatment with tepluzumab or placebo, and then basically followed um, into, for the development of diabetes. And the way the trial structure was set up, we recruited a sufficient number of subjects so that we anticipated that 40 at least would develop type 1 diabetes. So we recruited a total of 76. The average age was about 13 or 14 in the two groups. And a total of 42 subjects developed diabetes. And it, what our data showed is that there was a significant delay in the development of type 1 diabetes in those who were treated with the anti-CD3 antibody to Plusimab. The median time to uh, the development of diabetes was four years in the tepluzumab treated subjects and two years in the placebo treated subjects. Overall, the annual rate of diabetes was cut by more than half. And um, uh, while 43 subjects treated with tepluzumab developed diabetes, uh, approximately three quarters or 75% of those treated with placebo developed diabetes. Now, we, uh, uh, we, we, the, the median time to the development of diabetes was two years, but I would point out that the structure of the trial was such that we don't know what will happen to those who had not developed diabetes at the conclusion of the trial. Um, at, when, when we ended the trial, 25 of the tepluzumab treated subjects still had not developed diabetes and were very keen to follow them to find out whether in fact they will or will never develop the disease. So we've had a lot of discussion about what, what does that mean, a two-year delay, um, and what's the significance of this finding. And I would point out that for those people who have diabetes, I think it's fair to say that any time without diabetes is a gift. And the two years also, I think, has very important clinical implications when you think about the, the people who were involved in this trial. They were largely children. So if it means that, you're, that you otherwise would develop diabetes when you're going into middle school or high school, and it's not going to occur if it's going to occur after you've been in middle school or high school, that's a very significant finding. So now the question is, where do we go from here? Um, and uh, you know, what, what are gonna be our next steps? So we're obviously very keen to see whether we might be able to get approval for this type of a treatment for individuals at risk. And we're currently in discussion with regulatory authorities to determine how we might move forward on this idea. And then I think the long-term question would be, who should we be screening and, and should we be offering this type of treatment to more? Because the majority of individuals who will develop diabetes don't in fact have a relative with type 1 diabetes. So maybe we should start thinking about now starting to screen a larger group of individuals. We, we never would have thought of this before because we had nothing to offer them. But now for the first time we have a treatment that would be able to delay the onset if not prevent it in uh, some individuals.